Hi there and welcome to today's video. I am Lily from Nay Ceramics. Me and my obnoxiously white microphone are going to be talking you through how to glaze some plates today. I have made these plates for a commission. I have made 80 plates. They've ordered 60. There's going to be a whole video on how to make work for a commission in the future. Uh, obviously I'm still part way through the process so we're just dipping our little toe in here for a quick little rundown on how to glaze plates. So step one you've got to make your plates obviously. I have done that. I have got these 80 plates here in my hot little hands. Actually a little side note. It's freezing. It snowed two days ago. The studio's fucking freezing. So step one they need to be bisque fired. These guys have been through the kiln. They've gone to 950 degrees Celsius. They have been unloaded, they've been stacked up. They are ready to be glazed. Step 1A, I guess you could wax your plates if you want to. I'm not a waxer. I don't wax my, my pots when I glaze them. I just think it's a waste of time. This is personal preference and like studio preference. If you're in a shared studio or like a community studio or a school or something, maybe it's required that you use wax on your pieces but for me in my own studio I hate this stuff I don't like it it's smoky it's stinky I think it takes more time to like wax the things because you kind of also have to do a little sponging anyway so step 1a wax I guess if you want to that's on you so right step one step two actually listen this is not good one two three mm -mm. this might come back to bite me in the ass later if I forget what number we're up to you mix the glaze up, mix it real well. This commission has asked for just like a standard white glaze and they want it to be on the inside only. So I'm just using my like studio white. It's a lovely glossy glaze. I need to mix it real well, mix it for like, I don't know, a couple of minutes, three minutes. And you know what? It's kind of lumpy. So here it goes through the sieve. It needs to be sieved because I'll tell you what, there's nothing more annoying than a lump in a glaze goes in the kiln it doesn't melt you got like a chunk of glaze right in the middle of a plate it's not hot so give it a wee sieve if it needs it step three do you guys do three like this or like this is quite cute or three it's kind of the european way step three is to pour the glaze into the plate so you want to use like i don't know a spoonful of glaze a little more perhaps you pour it into the plate and you kind of swirl the plate around to make sure that every surface is covered in glaze. If you are working with a glaze that needs a thick coat, then you maybe want to do a couple of coats or you just maybe want to hold it there for a little bit longer. For me, this glaze is just a standard glaze. It's really easy to use, so it's just going to take however long it takes. I'm not doing a second coat, just doing one. If you're working with a piece that is um, glazed all over, then maybe you're going to do a little dip situation, or maybe you can hold the foot ring if you have one and dip it in this way. Um, you can also use like a big container and kind of swish it through the container of glaze. That's a very common way of glazing plates. Step four, let the pieces dry. Bisqueware is great at moisture wicking, so it's going to happen really quickly. It's like a polyester like sportswear whatever that fabric is when you go for a run you're running a little marathon no sweat to be seen because the moisture is whicked away from you same as bisque wet. step four is not doing anything you're just waiting step five you gotta wipe your pieces so you gotta wipe the bases obviously so wherever the piece is sitting in the kiln you need to make sure it doesn't have any glaze on if you have a foot ring, then that's where you wipe. You need to wipe the sides and I wipe the rims as well. Put them aside. You can stack them up if you want. If you're feeling a little risky, this is kind of what I do to save a bit of space. If you need to do a little fettling of your piece because you can see some like little um, funny little drips or like little pinholes, do that now just with a dry finger. I don't want to see any wet fingers here because it's not going to work. You're going to peel your glaze off. Make sure your hands are dry and you just kind of... Kind of just brush your finger over the glazeware very lightly. Step six, time to load the kiln. Glazing plates is kind of a pain in the ass because they take up so much vertical space. Like a bisque where you can do things on their sides vertically, whatever. Glazing plates is a pain in the ass because you've got to have them real flat. You can't have them, I don't know, like off the side of the shelf or anything like that. So yeah, stack them up as best as you can, as efficiently as you can in the kiln. If you want to know how to stack a kiln, this is a video up here. It's me just loading a kiln. Yeah, you're welcome. There's also a bisque firing one, but this is the glaze one. Step seven. 
we need to fire the kiln. So the kiln is going to go up to whatever temperature that your clay and glaze go to. My clay is a stoneware clay. It goes up to between cones nine and 10. If you're a cone person or if you're a Celsius person, that is about 1,265 degrees Celsius with a 20 minute soak. In one kiln and the other kiln is a 25 minute soak. They're in the kiln, they're firing. Pieces are gonna be in the kiln for about two days. And then once they're out of the kiln, you can firstly marvel at them. I guess step eight, marvel. Marvel at your pieces. Marvel at your wear. Well done. You did this. Um, you made some plates, you glazed your plates, you fired your plates and here they are. Step 10, if you need to, give them a little sand. If you are gonna sand them, if you've got loads, then you should wet sand. If you've just got one, you can do a quick little ch -ch 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 -ch, but wear a mask so that you don't breathe in any of the silica. That's it. That's the story of how to glaze plates. I hope that you've learned something. I hope that this has been fun. It's been fun for me. You can follow me on Instagram. I'm at may.ceramics. You can follow me on TikTok as well. I'm also at may.ceramics. You can subscribe here on YouTube, but you know, you, you know how this works. I don't need to tell you what to do. Go forth, be well. If you have any questions, let me know. I hope this has been helpful. Goodbye.